Well, good morning, everybody. Glad to see you. Glad you're here with us today. Beautiful weather. We're going to get started. And, uh, I'll invite you to stand with us. We like to start with a call to worship. Help us just fix our our mind, our, get our hearts, our posture ready to worship Jesus. And uh, be reading out of the book of Isaiah, chapter 12. And then we'll sing. But it says, Isaiah 12, verse 1. It says, You will say in that day, I will give thanks to you, O Lord. For though you were angry with me, your anger turned away, that you might comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and will not be afraid. For the Lord God is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. With joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation, and you will say in that day, give thanks to the Lord, call upon his name, Make known his deeds among the peoples. Proclaim that his name is exalted. Sing praises to the Lord, for he has done gloriously. Let this be made known in all the earth. Shout and sing for joy, O inhabitant of Zion, for great in your midst is the Holy One of Israel. Amen. Let's pray before the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. We give you thanks, Father. We give you praise for all that you've done. We lift our voice, Lord, with thanksgiving and praise. We exalt you, Lord. With our very breath, we return to you praise. God of our salvation, God of our salvation, we thank you, we praise you.
Jesus. There's no one like you. There's no one like
Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child Came like the least of us. Behold, Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the roaring lion. Oh, be still and behold. Him. With sinners and saints Heal the blind, the lost and the lame Even now he is in our midst Behold him He who chose a criminal's end Paid with blood to settle our debt
for salvation belongs to the Lord. We praise you, Lord, and we respond in adoration. We sing to you, Lord, from the depths of our hearts. Then sings my soul. Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God. sings my soul. Then sings my soul. Lift up your voices, come on. My Savior God to me. How great thou art. How great you are. How great thou art. sings my soul, my Savior God to Thee, how great Thou art, how great Thou art. Hallelujah, how great He is, amen, isn't He great? Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated this morning. I want to welcome you this morning to the Light of the Valley Church. We're so glad you've decided to join us. We want to welcome those who are viewing online as well. <clears throat> We're so glad you've decided to join us as well. <clears throat> it's good to see you all this morning. Amen. I haven't preached in three weeks, so I feel like preaching today. 
<laughs> I want to thank the Lord for your prayers for me, my wife, my daughter Megan. We hadn't been out for a while. I was telling my wife, I've, uh, for about a month, I've been wanting to preach this message, and I got the flu. And I had just gotten over the flu, and then I got COVID. <laughs> so I just, but praise God, we're here. Amen. And, uh, and I'm going to preach the message that I've been trying to preach for, for, for about a month now. <clears throat> a message that I have entitled Deliverance, and I believe God is going to bring deliverance in a lot of our lives this morning. But before we get started, here at Light of the Valley Church, you know what we do. Lift up your Bibles if you got it with you. And say this with me. This is the Word of God. It's not my opinion. It's not man's opinion. It's God's Word. And I'm going to allow God's Word to speak to me today. If you believe that, say amen. We must always remember the Word of God is alive. It's living. Hallelujah. When you read it, you find God speaking to you. Mm. Like I said earlier, <clears throat> I'm going to bring this message on that I've entitled Deliverance. And it has a lot to do with spiritual warfare. And although um, spiritual warfare is not something new per se, <coughs> excuse me, but I have uh, taught, about, taught on it before, actually probably a month ago or so, I, I brought a, a message on uh, spiritual warfare. So it's not new. But one of the things that we need to remember, uh, you know, we all know that God is love. Our God is a God of mercy, compassion. Amen? And He's a gracious God. But one thing we tend to forget is that our God is a God of war. He is a God of war, and He helps us in our battles. We can't forget that. He helps us in our battles. Our battles are battles that we fight against the forces of evil, the forces of the enemy. You know that in our Christian walk, we're always going to have battles in our life. We're going to have battles against other people in this world. We're going to have battles against, of course, the forces of the enemy as well. We're also going to have struggles and battles with the flesh. That's why the Apostle Paul speaks so much about overcoming the flesh. You know? and, uh, so we're always going to have these kind of battles in our Christian walk. But uh, we have to remember that the battles that we have are battles against the devil, his demons, and evil spirits. Many people get uncomfortable as soon as you start talking about demons and evil spirits. You know, uh, but reality is they exist. They are very real. Many people have heard and read about demons. Demons, what are they? They're fallen angels. Demon activity still exists today, and because it still exists today, people need to be set free from them still. Okay? So that's what we're going to be talking about that. Uh, demon activity is sometimes minimized as well. But... Um, just because it's been minimized, it does not mean it does not exist. It has been known to exist since we read it in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the New Testament, for as long as time has started. And Jesus spoke of demons and evil spirits. He spoke of them. <clears throat> but not only did he speak and about them, but Jesus knew how to deal with them. And he also said that all believers would be able to cast them out, to deal with them as well. So our verses for today, I'm going to ask that you go to Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. And when you find those verses, stand to your feet and we'll read them together. <laughs> Once again, Mark chapter 16, verse 17, and Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12. Beginning in Mark. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. How many believe here? Amen. 
Ephesians 6.12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Father, we thank you for your word. And we pray, Holy Spirit, that you would bring your word into the hearts of the hearers this morning. And that your word will bring forth not only faith and hope, but Father, it would energize them to be able to take and use the authority that you have given them in your word, in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated this morning. So I'm going to talk a little bit about our spiritual enemy, because we're talking about deliverance. But in order for us to be delivered, we have to know who our enemy is. Half the battle is knowing who the enemy is. Amen? You've got to know who he is. You know, demons are spiritual enemies, and it is the responsibility of each Christian to deal with them directly in spiritual warfare. It is your responsibility and my responsibility. It is both of our responsibilities. Mark chapter 16, verse 17 that we just read tells us that the believer has greater authority than the authority of the demons. Greater authority over their power. That means demons are forced to yield to the authority of the name of Jesus. Oh, what a wonderful name, the name of Jesus. At that name, the Bible says, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. At that name, I believe demons tremble. It is a name unlike any other name. You know, the objective of the devil is to get you off track. He wants you off track from the purposes of God for your life. And he will try everything possible to do so. He will do it by bringing sickness into your body. He will do it by breaking your relationships within your family, within your, uh, between marriages, between sons and daughters. He will do it any way he can, even financially. He'll bring things into your life to misdirect you from the purposes of God for your life. That's what he intends to do. That's what he wants to do. He'll take you off track from that. So then Ephesians 6 mentions four important categories or important things about our spiritual enemy. I'm going to briefly go through them. Um, first, the first one it mentions, it says, We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities is the first one. Principalities is defined as... Um, well, principalities, the Greek word for it is used to describe things in series, such as uh, leaders, rulers, magistrates. It's in a series. Um, <clears throat> so this word, the, the, this would describe uh, then that they have rank and organization. Okay? The English word principality is actually defined as uh, the territory or the jurisdiction of a prince. This means that principalities are assigned over areas such as nations and cities. We know that because we see the example of that in the book of Daniel chapter 10. In the book of Daniel chapter 10, we see that Daniel, uh, the prophet, had been praying, asking, seeking the Lord for something. And there, we see in the word of God that God sent the answer. But we see that Daniel continued to pray and fast and seek the Lord for 21 days because he never received the answer. So then we see something happen from the time that God sent it to the time he received it. What took place? Something behind the scenes. It was in the spiritual realm that we could not see. The Bible says that the prince of Persia detained it, detained the answer. It wasn't, it wasn't a natural king. This is a spiritual king. It was a principality of Persia that was holding the answer from reaching Daniel. That means that they have that power and ability to try and do that. The Bible says that Michael, the archangel, was sent to go and help this other angel so that the answer could come. When he came, he broke through. The answer came to Daniel, what he had been waiting for. So... Here's the thing behind this, though. During that whole time that Daniel had been praying, he never gave up. In other words, 
when he prayed, since the Bible says that the word of God says that since the first day he prayed, the answer was sent. You know how many of us that must happen to? Since the first time you pray, the answer is sent. But it, could it be possible that it's being detained by the enemy? What does that mean? We need to continue to pray until the answer comes. That's one of the reasons why we pray. We continue to pray and pray until the breakthrough comes. But this specific uh, principle, principality was over Persia. That means that they have jurisdiction and territories. Second, we see that uh, our warfare, our battle is against powers. Going back to Ephesians 6.12. Against principalities and against powers. So the word powers tells us that the demons who are placed over nations or various areas or territories are given authority to carry out whatever orders have been assigned to them. Okay? <clears throat> this is, we're starting to see that there's some type of organization there. Uh, they are given specific orders and they're given the authority to carry out those orders. The Bible tells us that demons not only have authority, but they have power. Now, what does this power consist of or entails? It's hard to really say, but it is a power nonetheless. We know that because Luke chapter 10, verse 19 tells us this. It says, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. You see, to overcome all the power. That means that the enemy has power. Okay? He has power. But what does the word say? He's given us authority over all his power. So even though he has power, we have been given the authority over that power Yet we fail to realize that when things happen in our lives, we let him take total control, realizing that we are the ones who have the authority over him. Okay? So we must not let him have his way. Amen? It's time that we stand up and do what God has called us to do. So then, we see um, <clears throat> the third thing, that the uh, category in our verse in Ephesians is, we fight against the rulers of the darkness of this world. The Greek word for world rulers can be translated as lord of the worlds or princes of this age. This emphasizes their intention to control. We remember 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 that says Satan is called the god of this world. When Adam fell through sin, Satan came, gained dominion of this world. Because of his fall and sin. Darkness, he says that the uh, rulers of darkness of this world. Darkness refers to ignorance, to misery, and sin. This is where they have control over those who are in darkness. In the matter of warfare, though, Jesus has clearly won the victory. Amen? Because of Adam... Satan took over. The devil took over. But then because of Jesus, he took that control back. The devil no longer has it. Except for those who are in darkness. That's what this verse is saying. Uh, the rulers of the darkness of this world. So they still rule in the darkness of this world. Jesus came and stripped him of that power and dominion. Hallelujah. How many say amen? But Christ, you know... This is what I want you to see. Jesus leaves it up to us, his church, to enforce that victory. Come on. Jesus won the victory, but whose responsibility is it to enforce that victory? Ours. It's our responsibility. We have to enforce that victory. We, as God's children, have every right to treat Satan and his demons as trespassers. Come on. What would you do if somebody came into your home? In the middle of the night, who doesn't belong there, that wasn't invited. That's a trespasser. Amen? Aren't you going to do everything in your power to get that person out? 
You see, it's the same thing in our lives, in our spiritual lives. Satan is a trespasser. He has no right in your, in your life, in your family, in your children. He has no right. He's trespassing. So if he's trespassing, you have the right to get him out. So then fourth in Ephesians, the last one, we fight against spiritual wickedness in high places, it says, or wicked spirits. Wickedness means departure from the rules of divine law. Uh, wickedness also means evil dispositions or practices. It means sin, sinfulness, immorality, and it signifies evil practices. The objective of these uh, evil spirits is wickedness. That's why they're called uh, wickedness in high places. Uh, th that's their objective is to create, to do, to act wickedness, to bring wickedness in high places. In high places means celestial or heavenly places. They occupy the regions of the air, the lower heavens, the sky, or the air is the seat of evil spirits. Now, these four things, these four categories that we've talked about, our enemy, show us that he is organized. He's not disorganized. Have you, ever no, you ever notice what, what do they call, what do we call in, in, uh, in our language? We say that's organized crime. It's crime nonetheless, but they're organized in the way they do it. The devil's the same way. They're demons, they're evil spirits, but they're organized in everything that they do. They have ranks, they have positions. So then these four things about our enemy show us that he's organized. Don't you think that it's time that we, the, ch the church, get organized in our battle against him? If he's organized, shouldn't we get organized as well? And one of the ways we get organized is by knowing what's in here. And using the authority that has been given to us. In spiritual warfare, we would remember... We are not praying to God, but rather taking authority over the evil spirits, over the demons. Uh, a lot of people mistake in this, and this is why I bring it up. Because many people pray to God to get the devil off of them. Now, you see, God has already done everything he's going to do. It is our responsibility to get the devil off. Why? Because Jesus already defeated him. Jesus won the victory 100%. We must not expect God to get the devil off our backs. Why? Because he has already defeated the devil. And he's given us the authority, the power and responsibility to make him flee. That's what the word says. Submit to God and resist the devil and he will flee. So then, we need to start using the word God has already given us. All that he has given us, we need to begin to use the weapons he's given us. One of the ways we fight the enemy is through deliverance, which is what we're going to be talking about this morning. Helping people get delivered from the oppression of demons or evil spirits. Now, they're different. there are several different areas of deliverance that people need. And we're going to look at some of these. The first one we're going to look at is personal deliverance. You as an individual. Does everyone need deliverance? Yes. So then the first objective in spiritual warfare is to free oneself. You can't help somebody else if you're not helped. Amen? You've got to be delivered and able to help somebody else. You've got to be set free to set somebody else free. You see, while we have walked in ignorance and darkness, the enemy has successfully made inroads into each and every one of us. So then we must learn how to get him out and how to keep him out. Amen? It's important to understand that. It's not just about getting him out. It's keeping him out. Do not be afraid. That's the other thing. Don't be afraid of him. Don't be afraid of demons and evil spirits when you hear that, <clears throat> that word or you hear somebody preaching about it. It's not to bring fear. It's not for you to be afraid of him. Amen? You are children of the Most High God. And the authority has been given to you. And the power has been given to you to exercise over him. <clears throat> so then, we learn, we must learn how to get him out. Uh, take authority. 
over him. And speak out loud when dealing with demons. You know, if, if you're trying to get a, a, a ten, we used to have a little chihuahua, okay? And uh, <clears throat> we no longer have her, but she blessed us all the time that we did have her. But anyway, uh, she, she was a little feisty, okay? And uh, you couldn't tell her, stop, butter, stop. Her name was Butter. Butter, stop. No, no. You wanted her to stop, you'd have to stop. You had to use a little force, a little authority. Then she would stop from what she was doing. Right? It's the same thing. When you're going to start taking authority over the devils, you don't speak to him like, stop. Stop it. No, you take authority. You, you're, you have to use the authority that has been given. Take authority and speak out loud when dealing with the demons, the evil spirits. Now, I understand that if you're not accustomed to doing it, then it may sound a little awkward to you at first until you get used to it, <clears throat> until you get accustomed to it. But understand that it is an effective and necessary tactic of spiritual warfare and self-deliverance. You must be able to do it. Uh, let me give you an example. I'm going to give you all an example of how to, how to command them per se. You don't have to. It's an example. You don't have to use word for word of what I'm going to give you the example of. You use your own words, but it is just an example. If the enemy is coming and he's putting thoughts in your mind, okay? All of us receive thoughts from the enemy. He's constantly bringing thoughts. But sometimes he brings thoughts so much that you meditate on them and you think on them and they start taking control over you, these thoughts. When he brings thoughts into your mind and tells you you're no good, you're worthless, why don't you take your life? You know, those are thoughts that you've got to do something about when he begins to bring these kind of thoughts. So when these thoughts be, uh, begin to come, uh, you have to take authority and stand against that. How do you do it? Let me give you an example. One thing you can say, you're, you're a liar, devil. You're a liar, demon. I reject that thought about me. My mind is under the protection of the blood of Jesus. I bind you for my thoughts. I command you to leave me alone in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's how you begin to speak and take authority over that. You've got to do that. How often do you do it? As often as it comes. You continue to do it. Why? Because the Bible says, submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. You've got to do it. This is a practical way of implementing that principle. You see, in whatever words you choose to use to vocalize your position in Christ and to resist the demons by the use of the name and blood of Jesus. Remember, they are trespassers. You have to remember, they are trespassers, and they must flee when resisted in this way. Do not just do it once, but keep doing it over and over because demons can be stubborn. So keep doing it until your mind is at peace. You keep doing it. You keep resisting it. You see, the enemy can bring a thought to your life. And you don't like that thought that he brings? Well, in the name of Jesus, I resist it. And you command that thought to leave. Five seconds later, the thought comes back again. You do it again. Five seconds later, it comes back. You do it again. You continue to do it until your mind is at peace. At first, it's hard to do or... If you're not accustomed to it, it's a little awkward to do, but you continue to do this. Why? Because the more you do it, you're going to start seeing that it's going to start leaving more and more. That maybe what took you two hours before your mind was at peace will suddenly take you only one hour. Then suddenly it's going to take you 30 minutes. And the time is going to get smaller and smaller because you've gotten accustomed to doing this. And you're not, you don't feel awkward about it, but you're using your authority. And you, you're going to begin to see that it's, it's working. Amen? Anybody here this morning? All right. <clears throat> okay, so we talked about deliverance for ourselves. I want to talk about delivering others. We must not only practice personal deliverance, but also deliverance for our families. Amen? Our church, our communities, our cities, our nation. When we do spiritual warfare on behalf of another person, 
It is important to understand that we are not controlling the will of the person. It's not witchcraft. In other words, when you're praying for somebody else, you're, and you're doing spiritual warfare on their behalf for whatever reason, and you're praying for them, whether it's for their salvation or whether it's something else, you cannot control their will. That's not what you do. That's witchcraft. You're not trying to control their will. What are you trying to do? You're trying to bind the power of the enemy over their lives is what you're doing. That's what you're praying. That's what you're interceding for. You see, why? Because God respects the will of man. Every person has their own free will to choose between right and wrong. But when we do spiritual warfare on behalf of another person, then what we, when you're doing that, you bind the power of the enemy. You bind the power of the, those demon forces, and what happens is that it releases that person, the will, to make a decision apart from the demon interference. Does that make sense to you all? Amen? What you're doing is, in other words, many times they can't see, they're confused, they're, they're in darkness because of the influence of the enemy over their lives. So when you're praying for them, you're praying that that influence, that darkness, that demon will leave. Why? Because when that leaves, then they can make a decision out of their own free will. You see, while the devil has them bound, they may not be able to. So you've got to set them free so that they can't come to the place of making that choice, that decision. Amen? So the power, their power then is bound for a season, temporary. You take advantage of that <clears throat> when you bind it. You take advantage of that season of when it's bound, uh, meaning when you notice that suddenly they're thinking clearly or it's become better, uh, you take advantage of bringing the Word of God during that time. Why? The enemy's not there to confuse it. You've already bound him. Amen? So parents have the right and the authority to do spiritual warfare for their homes and their children. Amen? If you're a parent, you got the authority to pray for your children. The process of casting out demons is called deliverance, which is what I'm talking about this morning. Now, understand that deliverance is not a cure-all. It's not a cure-all just because you got delivered. No. But you can find real help through deliverance. Problems that could not be solved through the known avenues may be solved through deliverance. There are certain things that, I don't know why this keeps happening and happening, and you're just trying a certain way. <clears throat> it could be possible now that what you need is to be delivered from that. It's, it's part of the enemy. That's what needs to get taken out. Amen? So then we cannot put all the blame on the devil. Amen? And his demons for all of our problems. Many of us love to do that. The devil made me do it. No, no. We can't blame him for everything. Come on. If you go over the speed limit, you can't say, the devil made me do it. It was your foot. Come on. So we, we, we cannot put all, of, all, of our, all the blame on the devil. There's always going to be extremes. Everything's the devil's fault or nothing's the devil's fault. We have to find a balance in between. There's a balance to everything. Okay? We cannot ignore the fact that he is to blame for some of the problems in our lives. The Bible says, let us not be ignorant of the devil's schemes, devices, and strategies. That means he has strategies against us, devices. He, he has plans against us. He's organized. Okay? <clears throat> we should do the same. Okay, so let me go to the next point here. We're helping delivering others to spiritual warfare. But <clears throat> here's the question then. How do demons enter? How do evil spirits enter a person? Remember, demons are evil personalities, evil spirits, and enemies of God. They have an objective. <clears throat> Their objective is to tempt, to deceive, to accuse, to condemn, to pressure, to defile, resist, oppose, to control, to oppress, to steal, kill, and destroy. That's their obje objective. Here's the thing. How do demons enter? Demons enter through open doors. 
And I'm not talking about natural open doors. They have to be given an opportunity. That's why the Bible says, don't give the devil a foothold. What's it, what does that mean? Don't give him an opportunity. Why? He'll take it. He'll go in. If you give him the opportunity, don't give him the opportunity because they come in through open doors. They have to be given an, an opportunity. There must be an, op- uh, an opening. So wh- what am I saying? In other words, a person cannot pick up a demon just by walking down the street and bumping into one. Okay? It doesn't work that way. There has to be an open door. The door is open for them to come in through sin. Sins of omission, sins of commission. What's the difference? Sins of commission is a sin that you act on, that you actually do, and you know about it willingly. Those are sins of commission that you do. Sins of omission are not doing something that you're supposed to do. If you know to do well and you don't do it, it's sin. So those are sins of omission. Doors are open when that happens. You all remember the story of Ananias and Sapphira in the Bible? <clears throat> the Bible says, P- Peter told him, why did you open that door? Why did you let the devil come and lie to you about this? These were believers. They were Christians. This is talking about us. That means that we as believers can open the door. So we must understand that how they come in is through open doors. The door can be opened through <clears throat> life circumstances as well as a child. You know that one of the first questions asked in pre-ministry counseling is, uh, how did you relate to your parents as a child? That's one of the first th- things. That, because they've come to understand that a lot of the major problems happened in childhood. Another way for the door to be open is through generational curses. If a child is told that he is like his parents and he's going to have the same issues they did, then he can become vulnerable. He can open that door. When a person begins to say, you know what, my mom was a very nervous person, I guess I am too. You just opened the door to something that should not have been opened. They have opened that door. The door can be opened through witchcraft as well. Getting involved in or practicing magic will open the door. The devil uses wicked men to fulfill his objectives. You know, one of the, um, a prayer request that I have received and has been increasing, and which is probably one of the reasons why I'm bringing this message, has to do with witchcraft. People have emailed me, texted me, and called me for prayer because they believe uh, somebody has uh, done something to them through witchcraft or something. So they want prayer for that. So... Uh, it, 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 that's one of the reasons why the Lord led me to bring this is because we have to understand what this means. Witchcraft um, <clears throat> is defined traditionally as the use of magic or supernatural powers to harm others. That's what it's used for. It is the practice of witches. That's why it's called witchcraft. It is sorcery and enchantment, spells and curses. God takes witchcraft very seriously. The Bible says that the penalty for practicing witchcraft under the law of Moses was death in Exodus 22, 18. Now, the book of Galatians in the New Testament, chapter 5, mentions that those who practice witchcraft will not inherit the kingdom of God. This is interesting because do you know that Galatians 5 was talking not only to non-believers but believers as well? You're saying that believers can practice witchcraft. This reveals that witchcraft has existed for a long time and still exists today. People use it to harm others by putting spells or curses on them. You know that there are only two sources of spiritual power, God and Satan. Satan has only the power that God allows him to have. We know that because of Job. Remember Job? Satan couldn't touch him without permission from God. So his, he was limited in his power and what he could do. So witchcraft is Satan's realm, and he will always counterfeit what God does. When Moses performed miracles before Pharaoh, you remember that? The magicians did the same things 
through demonic power. We see that in Exodus 8, 7. The question I'm asking this morning then is this. Can a believer be impacted by witchcraft? Psalms 109.17 says that he loved to pronounce a curse, may it come upon him. He found no pleasure and blessing, may it be far from him. What was David saying here? In other words, he was saying, if they try to put a spell on you, then it will return to them. What David was saying here. Do you remember the disobedient uh, prophet Balaam? How, how he tried to curse the nation of Israel? And every time he tried to curse them, it turned into a blessing. Cursing those whom God has blessed is a dangerous thing. Proverbs 26, 27 says, warns that whoever digs a pit will fall in it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. You see, the Christian cannot be cursed. The only way you can be cursed is if you open the door for the curse to come. Other than that, you're under divine protection. God's blessing is more powerful than any curse. Amen? We do not need to worry about anyone casting any sort of a pagan spell on us. Voodoo, witchcraft, hexes, curses have no power over us because they come from Satan. And Satan is no match for the Lord. What does the word say in 1 John 4, 4? Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. Come on, say that with me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. You, see, you need not fear. God has a hedge of protection around you like he did Job. Amen. Praise God for that. So then what do we need to do? We need to shut the door. It's about shutting the doors that we've opened. Before we can be delivered from any demon or evil spirit or from any kind of witchcraft, we must be willing to close the door. A door was opened to allow the enemy to come in. We must now close that door. We close the door by not falling for his lies anymore. You see, I'm not here this morning to make you feel good or happy. I'm here to get you free, to set you free from the attacks of the devil, from, his pit, from the pitfalls of life, from the entrapments of the enemy. God wants to free you from broken marriages, from backsliders in your family, from bad soul ties, from generational curses that were never dealt with. You see, close the door to destiny stealers is what we need to do. Destiny stealers will, will have you create bad soul ties and bondages in your life. We need to close those doors. You need to be willing to close those doors. Many of us open the door, we let the enemy come in, and we like it, and we leave the door open. We don't want to close that anymore. We must close those doors that we have allowed the enemy to come in. I'm going to be concluding with this. Look, Satan commands an army that is set up like any modern-day military organization with ranking and positions of authority. That army is composed of fallen angels and unclean spirits. These hold different ranks and positions and control geographical locations, including countries, states, cities, and other locations. How do we know that? Have you ever noticed that certain areas have more of a, pro a, a, a specific problem than other areas? You can suddenly see, have you noticed in this high school there's a very high rate in suicides? Have you noticed over here in this city there's a very high rate in drugs? Have you noticed, and you start looking at different geographical locations, and they're known for something specific. Why? The principality in that area has taken control over that area, and that's what you see, that influence there. They carry out their orders to control and manipulate and destroy man. We have been given orders as well. Did you know that? 
We've been given orders by our commander in chief, Jesus Christ. Jesus told us to go out and to preach the gospel and that these signs will accompany those who believe. He said that in my name they will cast out devils, demons. In my name they will do it. They will speak in new tongues. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly poison, it will not hurt them. It also says they will lay their hands on the sick and they will recover. All of this is in Mark chapter 16, verses 17 and 18. You see, I'm going to do a prayer for deliverance for witchcraft because that's one of the reasons why I had done this for witchcraft. But I want to minister to you personally, to all those who need deliverance and, or you think you need deliverance in any other area of your life. We're going to be doing that this morning. But first I'd like to do a prayer over deliverance from witchcraft. I'm going to ask that you stand to your feet this morning. Whether you're here in person or whether you're <clears throat> viewing online. If you believe there's witchcraft in your life, your family, your marriage, I want to pray for you today to break that, to set you free. Jesus came to set us free. We're going to pray that over your life. But after we pray over this, this prayer to break the power of witchcraft, I want to minister to all those who need ministering to deliverance in any other area. I'll ask that you come to the front and we will pray, be ministering to you, praying for you to get you set free. But if you need this prayer, over witchcraft for you or your family, your loved ones, then I want you to pray this prayer with me. As I pray it, repeat it after me. To break the power of the enemy. Hallelujah. Pray this after me if, this, if you need deliverance in this area. Heavenly Father, I come to you today I acknowledge you as the supreme God. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that has not only forgiven me of all my sins, but has also given me power and authority over all the power of the enemy. I come to you and ask that the blood of Jesus would cover me from all the attacks of the devil and his demons. I repent of any door that I may have opened that allowed the enemy entrance into my life or my family. I close the door I may have opened and I stand on your promise to forgive me. I repent for any place of sin concerning wrong motives <coughs> wrong intentions or any place where I have not guarded my heart Lord it is not your will for me or my family to be harassed by the spirit of witchcraft I come against that spirit of witchcraft in my life and I decree and I declare that any form of witchcraft, whether it be white or black magic or enchantments or spells the devil has issued or is orchestrating against me, against my life or the life of my family or my husband or my wife or my son or my daughter, are now canceled in Jesus' name. I declare that the spirit of witchcraft is now broken from my life. I break the hold of the enemy, the hold that he has had over me and my family in Jesus' name. I break all hexes, vexes, 
curses and spells, incantations, evil declarations, psychic prayers and thoughts, witchcraft control, mind control, jinxes, and enchantments. I break them off of me in Jesus' name. And I loose myself and my children from them in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen, if you believe that. Hallelujah. We want to minister to you, like I said. We're going to go ahead and worship the Lord and declare His power over us. But if you need prayer, if you need to be, you feel like you need deliverance in one area of your life, I ask that you come to the front and we're going to minister to you as we continue to worship.
break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. If you haven't done it yet, I want you to declare with me this morning and say, I am free. 
Come on, say it like you mean it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you are believing for your family, say, my family is free. Hallelujah. From this day forward, don't open the door to the enemy. Keep them out. Be aware of what you say, what you speak, what you do. Don't let the devil in. And if he happens to come in, get him out. You've got the authority to do it. Jesus said he has given us, his church, the authority. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Anybody here who feels like a cloud of darkness, per se? Uh, like not able to think clearly. Anybody here this morning who feels like that? Come on up, Linda. Help me pray this morning. Just lift up your hands, Linda. In Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name. We come against confusion, darkness, unable to think clearly in the name of Jesus. We bind that in the name of Jesus. We declare in the name of Jesus that to be removed now in Jesus' name. We release clarity to come, wisdom, knowledge, able to discern, to think clearly in the name of Jesus. We declare it in the name of Jesus that you're set free from that thing that was just hanging over you in Jesus' name. It's there no more in the name of Jesus. Cast it out in Jesus' name. We declare free in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Just continue to thank the Lord this morning. I also want to give you the opportunity. We're going to take the opportunity to receive the tithes and the offerings. But continue to worship the Lord. He still wants to do some things here to this morning. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Then sings my soul.
know the devil doesn't like it when we worship? Thank you, Jesus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to Thee. Jesus. How great Thou continue to work in the lives of every person that is here present I ask Holy Spirit all those Lord God who needed ministering to for deliverance we thank you for that deliverance that has come we thank you for those who have been set free from things in the heart things in the mind we thank you for that freedom in households in homes in broken families we thank you for the restoration and the reconciliation. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for the work that you have done in your people this morning. And for those who are viewing online as well, we pray for those who are being set free, and we thank you for it. I pray that you help us to understand and really see the authority that you have given us in your name. That each person that is hearing my voice <laughs> can stand up in that authority and use it in Jesus' name for themselves, for their marriages, for their family, to begin to take authority in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. We believe it now. Hallelujah. <laughs> Excuse me. If you're ready, lift up your envelopes. I want to pray for you for your offerings this morning. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Just lift up your envelopes if you got it. If you're online as well, I want to pray for you. Father, I want to pray for every person who is giving this morning, Lord God. As they release from their hands this financial seed, we pray that you release from your hands. Pour out a blessing upon their lives, Father, that there won't be room enough to receive it in. We pray that there will always be provision, that you will always supply, that there will be an abundance so that they can be a blessing to others. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. We believe it done. Hallelujah. <clears throat> All right. Before I let you go, I want to invite you for next week because I got a <clears throat> another message I've been wanting to bring on your imagination. What do you imagine? What do you think about? What's on your mind constantly? We're going to be 
talking about that next week and how to use your imagination for something good. Amen. <clears throat> Let me bless you all this morning. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord be gracious to you. May he lift up his face upon you. May he give you peace. May he protect you and may he prosper you all the days of your life. You all are blessed this morning. God bless you. Thank you for coming. <laughs>